And that's your log of? Value, um, x squared plus 5x plus 13. Good. Interval is negative 3 to 1. Good. I get my table going. I have to have f prime. I have to have f of x. I have to have negative 3 to 1, mandatory. And I have to differentiate that. Can anyone give us the derivative of natural log of x squared plus 5x plus 13? I got 2x plus 5 over x squared plus 5x plus 13. Of course. So this should never be undefined. Because even if it's undefined, then the function is undefined. So it cannot be a critical number. But I have to write to show that I know that critical numbers come from two sources, from f prime of x equals 0 and from f prime of x being undefined. I'm not sure why there is that shadow in there. OK, good. It's better now. OK, so but again, the x squared plus 5x plus 13 will not be 0. Because if this is 0, then the function is undefined. So we're not going to have any, any critical numbers coming from this. So when is a fraction 0? When the top is 0. Right. So we have to write 2x plus 5 equals 0. So x equals negative 5 halves, or negative, if you want, negative 2.5. I have to make sure that it's in, the, in between these two. Otherwise, I will not put it in. And it is. So I will put negative 2.5, 0 immediately because f prime is 0. And I have to study the sign. This has to be a positive number, no doubt. Because remember, natural law cannot be applied to negative numbers or 0. So this has to be positive. So when I determine the sign of this, I only determine the sign of the numerator. So before it's 0, what is the sign? And after it's 0, what is the sign? Can anyone tell us? Can anyone tell us the sign of 2x plus 5 before and after it's 0? Negative before. And positive. Right, of course. You don't have, we don't have to think. Please remember, we don't have to think. This is a linear function with a positive slope. Where is it coming? From which kind of values? Negative. Right. And where is it going? Positive. Yeah. Good. So then this must be the situation. And this has to be, um, uh, of course, the relative and absolute. But, but we have to determine the values here, here, and here. OK? So this time, I will put this function in. I don't really know, don't need any of these. So uh, the function was natural log. And in print, natural log. And in parentheses, x squared plus 5x and plus 13. And uh, all I care about are negative 3, uh, negative 2.5, and 1. And I got one point. Oh, be careful now. We are quite close. OK, now 1.95. I don't know. I remember uh, you have to check how many decimal digits they want. So I, I have no idea. I'm just going to copy two. 1.91. And I'm going to copy 2.94. So you have to look at the fine print before you do anything. So. <clears throat> Again, that's when I catch my mistakes. If these two rows don't go don't work well together, then I'll say oops and start from scratch. 1.95 to 1.91, they're very close, but it's correct. 1.91 to 2.94, that's correct. So the function values are like this: 1.95, a little bit lower, 1.91, and much higher, 2.94. I'm not graphing the function. I'm just saying. Obviously, this is the absolute min and relative min. This is absolutely nothing. And this is the absolute max. Absolute max. And this one is the absolute and local min. OK, 
Okay, so going back to after we found the derivative and you made the um, presumption that the denominator doesn't need to be evaluated because the natural log of that can't be negative. Um, yes. Is that, like, we should at least take a second and evaluate that, right? You like, can. We are doing it. Yes, of course. Okay. You can, but then, but then the function, then this function is not defined. Okay. Okay. So um, you can plug in anything between negative three and three, and as you see, see the values. So they are all positive values. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I had oh. a question about this uh, last answers. Yes. So this question is actually on WebAssign in, uh, in 4.1, and I got those answers, but when I put them in, they were wrong. So, uh, so how many decimal digits they want? I'm not sure. I tried everything. Okay, let me take a look at it. It's uh, number 13 in WebAssign 4.1. Just to give me, you said number 13, not 16? Yeah, it's 13 in it, in four point in four dot one. Okay, very good. Let me let me take a look at it. Good point. So, um, who was that, uh, Bennett? So I can look at exactly your problem because some some problems are different. They will not uh, be exactly the same. So, one second. I'm almost there. I need to find you and click on your name. I got it. Okay, and you said 13. Scrolling to 13 in 4.1. Okay, scrolling, scrolling, 13, 13. And is it identical problem? Uh, yeah. Uh Oh, and uh, x squared plus 5x plus 13. Yes, actually, you do have the same problem. Okay. And they say the absolute min value. You, yes. you wrote natural log of 27 over 4. You can do that. What? Uh, and right now, the one I just submitted is 1.91. Oh, they want, they want. Okay, so they didn't allow us any approximations. I got it. I understand. They don't want approximations. Fine. So if they don't want approximations, then f of negative 3 will be natural log of 9 minus 15 plus 13. So this is uh, negative 2. So this is natural log uh, 7. OK. Um, f of negative 2.5. If they don't say approximations, you cannot enter approximations. That's why I was asking. Always read the fine print. If there is no approximations, you have to enter it like this. So um, 2.5 squared uh, minus 5 times 2.5 and plus 13. Okay, and they want this in a fraction form. That's why they run 27 over 4. So this is 27 over 4. And the last one is f of 1, which is natural log of 1 plus 5 is 6, natural log of 19. That's all. If they don't indicate approximations and the number of digits, uh, make sure that everything is exact. So, okay, thank you. So for this one, there is nothing I have to enter because it's nothing. But for the middle one, I have to enter natural log of 27 over 4. For the last one, I cannot write 2.94. I have to write natural log of 19. Perfect. Anything else? Other questions? Other issues? Anything? Good. See, that's why I want my students to stay with me uh, and not fall behind. So you can ask questions on the spot so everyone benefits from it. And I'm on page 5. Not 5A, not 5B, but 5. OK. So if you find something else, please ask. Stop me and ask. So in 4.2, we looked at Rawls theorem. 
Okay, this was done last time. And now we have to look at something called MVT, mean value theorem. Mean value theorem has only two hypotheses. And they are both from they're both coming from Rolle's theorem. Same, but just the first two. Number one, f is continuous on a comma b. Number two, f differentiable on a comma b. Okay, so now what is the result? What does this mean? Okay, so let's go back to the graph. I am no longer going to graph a function that has the same starts at f of a and comes back to f of b. But any, any situation, it doesn't matter. So let's say we have this function. So this is the point a comma f of a, of course. And this is the point b f of b. And this is point a and this is point b. So now I will draw the secant line, or if you want, a line that goes through these two points. This is not a tangent line. But we can determine the slope of this line. It passes to the two given points. Can anyone give us the slope of this line quickly? f of b minus f of a. Over Thank you. Thank you. f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. And here's what I'm going to do next. Here it is. I'm going to draw a parallel line to this one. We know that it has to have the same slope. So parallel, 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 parallel till this point where it becomes the tangent. Okay, so obviously you will agree that this line, let me, let me use a different color, a better one. So I hope you agree that the slope of the tangent at this point, let me call it C, um, has the same slope with the line AB. Would you agree? You have to agree because that's what I did by construction. So I, I drew a parallel line to the, to the line passing through A and B that is tangent to the graph of the function f of x. So they have to have the same slope. Now can anyone give us the slope of the tangent line? Uh, the graph of the function f of x at the point c. And this is lowercase c and this is uppercase c. Can anyone give us the slope of the tangent at c? It's the same? Yes. But what is it? Something that we learned in calculus. This was with algebra. Forget about this for a moment. This was with algebra. We knew this from a long time ago. Now I would like to determine the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f of x. The derivative. Yes. f prime of? C. Exactly. Exactly. So this is with algebra again for the slope of this line AB. But this is with calculus. This is what we've been doing from the beginning of the class. Good. And we know that have to be equal to each other. So then f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. OK, stay with me. Oh, I didn't, we didn't finish. So the mean value theorem says that if we have a function that is continuous on the interval a, b, and is differentiable at least on the open interval a, b. We don't care whether it's differentiable here or here. It doesn't matter. We are interested in the middle anyway. Then, by MVT, 
there exists a C in the open interval AB, at least one, such that F prime of C, in other words, the slope of the tangent equals the slope of this line, such that F prime of C equals F of B minus F of A over B minus A. So again, the mean value theorem says if the function is continuous and differentiable on the respective interval, then by MVT, there exists a C in the open interval A comma B such that, such that this happens. Again, we're not going to look at sophisticated applications. We're just going to simply determine the, const, the, the value C. So let's look at an example. I'm sharing my screen and back to 4.2 for the mean value theorem. Well, let's look at a simple application. Just to understand and remember what this means. Okay, here it is. Okay. Uh, verify that the function satisfies the hypothesis of the mean value theorem on the given interval. Then find all numbers C that satisfy the condition, the conclusion, sorry, of course. Satisfy the conclusion of the mean value theorem. Okay, so let's look at first one, 15. And that is f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 on 0, 2. I have to state those two hypotheses. So number one, f continuous on two, 0, 2 as a polynomial, as we know, as a poly. Number two, for the same reason, differentiable on the open interval 0, comma 2 for the same reason. Then, by the mean value theorem, I will move on to page 6. There exists a C in the open interval A, comma B, such that, please remember, F prime of C equals F of B minus F of A divided by B minus A. The slope of the tangent line equals the slope of the line through AB. A is 0, B is 2. So let's find, so I'm going to copy the function here, f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And the interval is 0, 2. I have to find f of 0 because this will be f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. So f of 0 is 1, f of 2 is um, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 minus 6 plus 1 is 3. We have to find f of prime of x because I need it on this side, 4x minus 3. And of course f prime of c will be 4c minus 3. The left hand side is 4c minus 3. The right hand side is f of 2 minus f of 0, 3 minus 1, divided by 2 minus 0. So 4c minus 3 equals 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 over 2 is 1, 4c equals 4, so c equals 1. I have to show that this is the in the interval 0, 2. If I don't show this, it means that I didn't check. But I did check. 1 is in the interval 0, 2. And it's guaranteed by the mean value theorem. 